As you saw, we have full operation. It is still angling slow to the left. According to the troubleshooting guide, if it's angling slow to the left, you are supposed to, of course, loosen up, loosen this set screw right here. And then um, you're gonna wanna loosen this. You're gonna grab this with the crescent and then this is what you're gonna operate. So if it's slow going to the left, you're gonna wanna spin it counterclockwise. What's going on with mine though is that I got solid right hand stuff, but when I adjust it left, meaning right going right is fast, it's good. It's supposed to be four seconds all the way right, all the way left, and then two seconds to go up, two seconds to go down, etc. Um, so I was thinking it may be a stretched cable but honestly, when I, if I adjusted that, I adjusted this so far to where the right wouldn't operate properly. So this thing had plenty of movement to deliver the fluid. I think what's going on is that, um, I'm wondering if this line has something is some issue with it that I don't really know about. Maybe an internal, whatever. Um, I did blow air through it. I do know I got fluid going through it. It could be my, my cylinder there, which I don't think so, because I was able to move the whole plow by myself. So for some reason, it's still going slow. For now, this works for me. Um, if you have any questions at all about anything on this, I've literally learned this thing inside and out and how it works, how to adjust it. Um, this, this adjustment here, the check valve, which is basically the check valve for your lift ram, when you up, go up, fluid pumps and basically goes um, through the through the four-way valve and in. Um, like I don't know the exact tunneling of it, but basically it flows up through the lift valve somehow. Trust me, look at the diagram; it's not not much of a help. But the fluid goes and then it flows, and the fluid pressure opens up this check valve check ball and then it opens and then of course it's not going to go down until you you operate that cam and that the uh, little shuttle valve goes this way and allows fluid to go back and into the reservoir so anyway the lift valve adjusts um, being able to actually lift the whole thing as well as if this is incorrectly adjusted both angling would be slow so it's a pretty, it's not that complicated, but it's certainly has had its moments. Um, those of you who've been following along, the reason why I basically rebuilt this whole thing is because um, it wasn't angling left. And what I had to do, finally, I put everything back together and, oh, you can see it. Look at that. Whoops. A little bit of fluid loss, the fluid pressure. Um, something's going on where um, I've got to get a whole new line and whole new couplers. Um, there might be a problem with this lift ram, maybe. Meaning, for some reason, under pressure, it's it binds up for some reason. I could try the packing nut. Let me loosen that a little bit. I'll try that. But, you know, the, I believe the pressure is exiting the pump. So I've either got to hang up in this line, hang up in the quick coupler, which now it actually works, thank, thank God. The brand new one's what was happening. I'll go to that in a second. Um, problem there or a problem in the, the lift, the angle ram. So I'm going to loosen that packing nut a little bit, see if that helps. And then let me tell you about what this issue was. So, with this hooked up, with normal fluid flow, with no pressure built, it had great flow. But what was happening, which I finally discovered with air pressure, which I kind of felt, when there was fluid pumping through this, which was pumping this way, 
the check valves would disconnect from each other somehow. And by the way, you can see how it spins really easily. So what's going on is it wasn't staying connected all the way and it would disconnect, therefore cause a non-connection and it wouldn't angle left. So this whole debacle was mainly caused by this slash this line. I'm not exactly sure what's going on quite yet and why it's angling slow still, but this was really the culprit. I did hook up the old nipple this part, um, the old one, and I used the new thing, but I never tried, I don't think I did. You know, and also I could have swapped these two over to the other side and, and see if the problem shifts over there. Anyway, but I did discover a lot of gunk and a lot of uh, cleaning up that needed to happen inside the, uh, inside the pump itself. So, Doing some good maintenance work, I've probably saved myself later down the, down the road with you know some possible pump failure or whatever. That, that, it was nasty in there, so glad to get everything cleaned up. I'm gonna loosen up this jam nut, see if I can get this thing to uh, cooperate a little bit. All right, y'all, the pod truck saga continues. I finally dropped it off to a local repair shop to see if they can help me figure out the diagnosed left. It's an awesome place up here in Alaska. And uh, hoping for the best. Well, everybody, we finally got our issue figured out. Um, it's, it's still a little bit weird, to be honest with you. Um, so these are brand new um, quick disconnects that I got from the local place. Originally put them on with the new hoses. I developed this issue. And I could have sworn I put the old ones back on and I still had the issue. Nonetheless, finally took it to Trailer Craft. They found... So first of all, I told them to put this one on because I wanted the new ones on there. And so I put it, I should have just put it on there before I took it there. Because as you'll see, I have the, uh, I have the old one on there. Anyway, but this, these stupid fittings were the issue. So I'm gonna have my wife film the front of the truck. Just film the fr front of the blade, just like standing back there. I'm just gonna show it. Movement. Watch out, Kiki. Kiki, come. put the new the old ones back on I still have the issue thanks babe so apparently the outflow and the inflow was having issues in these stupid quick disconnect fittings so they gave me a, uh, a new one it looks it does look different it looks heavier duty uh, maybe I should go get one like this from them I might do that yeah these ones look like they're cheap and the only issue I have still that I need to do is this is the old one. And so I think I'm gonna go to a, a place called Alaska Rubber and find some heavier duty uh, quick disconnects. Obviously this one doesn't leak, it's fine, it's fine babe. And um, other than that, back to the drawing board and getting this thing uh, tuned up more. I gotta do the calibration kit for the carburetor to lean the uh, fuel system a little bit. I have to upgrade my electrical. This is my chassis. I think I've only got, yeah, I just hear it this one, not like My ground for the whole entire vehicle goes through the bracket on the alternator. That's not good. And I've got a mile long of it. So, and this thing really should have dual batteries for the plow anyway, so. But uh, I need to get a new fuel filter in there, do some tuning before the before the year. Letting the old dogs. Good boy. Where's Gidda? Oh, there he is. Good boy, Kiki. Good boy, Keen Eye. Good boy. Yay, Kiki. 
Good boy. Good boy, Keen Eye. Huh? Get up, what are you doing? You eating? All right, you guys, finally figured it out. Something really stupid. I should have just went out and bought brand new ones, but I just, I wasn't convinced that that was the issue. So live and learn. They adjusted the cables for me. I mean, it, you saw it works great. So as long as I've got a good charge in the battery, we're good to go. So, whoops. <laughs> nice, babe.